Hello everybody. Okay, before we get started tonight, we have a couple housekeeping items. Um, first of all, we have among us a very studious attendee um, who took copious notes down at the first session, which I'm very grateful for, but left them behind. Does, is this anybody's set of notes? Oh! To the Consul General. <laughs> And we're not done with lost items. We also have a bag. <laughs> Anybody recognize the, oh, <laughs> the entire consular core, it seems. <laughs> <laughs> and we have two more items. A, a fabulous scarf. <laughs> Does this look, oh. And the Federal Reserve, R Richard. People say we're all about black and gray. <laughs> well, we'll get you one. And, and last but not least. <laughs> it looks like a, uh, a woman's sweater. Black sweater. Oh, Up! And Michelle Simos. <laughs> Terrific. Well, now that we got that going. Um, I just want to, I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you all again, um, and to really thank you for joining us. Though it is a remarkable location, um, and I particularly like it best in the winter when it's quiet and peaceful, um, I do realize that Chatham is a far away from Boston, um, and this is a long. Um, almost basically 24-hour program. Um, so I'm... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, no, in all seriousness, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your lives and uh, making that sacrifice with family and friends uh, and personal time to, to be with us, to, to, to help explore the future of our city and our, our commonwealth and uh, to, to sacrifice that on, on behalf of our fellow citizens. Um, we really are thrilled to have you here and excited for the great day we have planned tomorrow. I'm, I'm particularly pleased um, with the discussion I, I expect we're going to have around some issues that I believe to be um, innovative, exciting, and a, a huge opportunity for Massachusetts and the Boston area. Um, so I look forward to our collective idea generation, collaboration, and productivity. Um, before I go any further, I want to recognize um, someone among us uh, who was recently awarded um, the Pinnacle Award. Um, it is the Boston Chamber of Commerce Award uh, to a very well-deserving uh, leader in our community, somebody who uh, has... Thank you, <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who is recognized for her leadership. Uh, <laughs> nice try, Richard. <laughs> Someone who is recognized for her leadership and her commitment um, to all of us in, in the work she does every day. Um, what I don't think um, is a part, what I know is not necessarily a part of the um, criteria for the Pinnacle Award, but I think certainly for Sue, uh, supersedes all else for which she was deservingly rewarded is her ability to inspire so many others. So, Sue, thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you so much. So of course, you deserved it. Um, now it's my opportunity to introduce our featured speakers for this evening. Um, I'm very excited to have with us uh, representatives from both the Boston and Cambridge City Councils here tonight. Yes, they can occupy the same space at the same time. <clears throat> um, 
as many of you know, the goals of the World Class Cities Partnership, or one of the goals of the World Class Cities Partnership, is to bring cities together. We tend to focus internationally, however, we also recognize the need to do that right here at home. So it has been our great pleasure to work with uh, Councilors Jackson and Chung from Cambridge and Boston in helping us to achieve um, a, a collaborative spirit between these two cities. Um, I, I now have the pleasure of introducing them both, uh, my friends, my comrades. Both are inspirational public servants, visionaries, and leaders. So first, Councillor Leland, who says I, it can't be done, Chung, <laughs> who has brought more youth, more vibrancy, uh, more diversity, more data-driven analysis, which I particularly appreciate, uh, and more collaboration to the Cambridge City Council. He has been a fabulous partner, a great friend, and a true leader. He's done all this, by the way, while uh, completing his MBA slash MPA at Harvard and MIT, while running for re-election, getting involved in a leadership role at the National League of Cities, and continuing his commitment to break the barriers between Boston and Cambridge. Uh, second, we have uh, Councillor Tito the Smooth Operator Jackson. <laughs> when my brother from another mother joined the City Council, <laughs> we all knew that that institution would never be the same. Tito has used his smooth power uh, of his passion, his presence, and his parties to ignite a fire of civic engagement in young people in his district and across the city. Just last week, it was announced that Tito had been successful in creating the new Boston City Council Committee on Global Opportunities, Innovation, and Technology. And his vision for a 21st century city, his commitment to the work we do together, and his love of Boston and all of Massachusetts makes me proud to call him my District 7 City Councilor and my friend. With that, please welcome Leland, who says that can't be done, Chong, and Tito, the smooth operator, Jackson. And there is a <laughs> there's a very special announcement which I'm very pleased to be here for. Thank you so much. Let's give it up one more time for Mike Lake and the World Class Cities Partnership. Uh, I was actually here last year and. He must not have gotten what he wanted out of me, so he actually invited me again uh, to speak. Um, but again, I'm, I'm very, very pleased at what the World Class City Partnership has done, um, is doing, and it's just r really raising, uh, raising the roof, we can um, relative to bringing people together, and also dealing with something that we don't usually do well in government, which is saying that we actually don't have all of the best ideas that we don't have a monopoly on all of the best ideas, and that we can work together as a community, as a, really a global community, to bring best ideas to the table, to share those ideas, and to provide uh, vitality and economic uh, wealth, as well as uh, turning things around for everybody. So I just want to, again, let's give it up one more time for Mike Lake. Oh, the, the announcement? Oh, I'm sorry, that's why he's still standing here, okay. We uh, would like to announce um, that we, this is, this is groundbreaking because we're doing it together. Um, the Boston City Council and the Cambridge City Council will meet in joint session to look at the issue of talent retention uh, in and around the greater Boston area. And we will do this. A great motivator and, and really mover in this um, has been the World Class Cities Partnership and the report that will soon be released uh, where we look at what we can do as respective cities but really as a region to retain the great, the great bones that we have here. Um, we, unlike lots of other places in the country, we have all of these things that are here and we want to make sure that we continue to cultivate our talent and really get our fair share and yield of the great and bright minds that move through here. So um, I think, and, and again, we would not be here had it not been for uh, the World Class Cities Partnership and they were integral um, in pulling this together. So let's give it up one more time for Mike. <laughs> Have a seat. 
Uh, so I just want to echo the, the, the thanks that Tito just expressed of the World Class Cities Partnership. Uh, it's an honor to be speaking in front of uh, some of the Commonwealth's most, most innovative and passionate uh, thinkers on the issues of how we can continue to progress as a Commonwealth, progress as a metro area, uh, continue to do even better in, in, a, in an increasingly global and competitive society. Uh, the World Class City Partnerships, uh, at least for me as, as a City Councilor since I've joined the City Council, has been one of the most uh, exciting and fun things to participate in. Uh, not only uh, the discussions we have here and going to Portugal, but getting to meet so many of you and just picking your brains about the, your thoughts and what you think and what the future might hold and how we can work together and work towards that uh, in common purpose. Uh, what we're going to be releasing uh, soon when we, when we have the joint session in terms of talent, looking at how do we keep more of the smart people that come to our universities and colleges here after they graduate to help energize our economy, create new jobs, keep us moving forward, keep us competitive, uh, is I think going to be a discussion that affects not only Boston, not only Cambridge, uh, but the entire Commonwealth. Cambridge is in a bit of a unique situation. Compared to the San Francisco Bay Area... <laughs> Mike, Mike promised that he'd bring the boxing gloves, so <laughs> we've got to wait for him to break those out, Tito. <laughs> uh, Cambridge is in a bit of a unique situation in that uh, we have, if you look at the census data over the next, you know, when we project out, 10% of our population is expected to be the 25 to 34 year olds who are, who are new to the area. That's compared with about 5% for the San Francisco Bay Area. We actually do a really good job in Cambridge of keeping people around and, and, and in our economy um, and keeping them uh, involved in the community. The problem we have is not a problem with the lack of ideas, it's not a problem of a lack of you know, fresh talent flowing in. The problem we have is we just cannot fit them all. We can't fit all of the people, we can't fit all of the companies. We need to partner with cities like Boston, cities like Somerville, all the way out to Lowell, to figure out what, how do we house all of these ideas? How do we house all the people? How do we find places for all the businesses that want to get started to start and stay here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts? And I think that's what the, is going to be really exciting about not only the report, not only the mm -hmm. insight that Mike Lake and the team at, uh, at Northeastern has, has come up with, but how do we turn that into action so we can make a stronger Commonwealth not just for Boston, not just for Cambridge, but for all of us. And, and I think the, the other aspect there is when we, do, when we look at Silicon Valley, we're actually looking at a region. We're not actually looking at individual municipalities. And those municipalities work together in a way, uh, and it's not a loss if a company moves across the bridge. Um, and, and, and in fact, it's actually we're a lot closer <laughs> than the folks are in uh, Silicon Valley. Um, Boston actually is one of the youngest cities um, in, in uh, the country. One third of our residents are actually age 20 uh, to 35. Um, and we call them the, the one in three, which is a really great uh, group uh, of young people. Um, the, we have 150,000 college students alone in the city of Boston. Um, I think Leland also brings up uh, the point relative to housing stock. Um, so if we're, we're, if we're going to push these initiatives, where are these folks going to live? Um, how are they going to live, and how is it not a displacement for the families who are actually currently um, there? Um, in addition, transportation infrastructure is one of the things that is very important, and we've heard a little bit about transportation infrastructure this week uh, with um, the release of uh, some of the, uh, the budget initiatives and how we actually begin to shore up the future of transportation in the state of Massachusetts rather than uh, plugging the holes with one finger uh, e each year. Um, and so I think we have a, a really great opportunity to do things that folks hadn't done in the past. Um, we've had schools here for a long, long time. You know, I was at Boston Latin School uh, last week, 1635. So we can get this school thing together, right? We've had students here for a really long time. But the thing that we haven't taken seriously is how do we build an environment and cultivate those young people? Uh, Greg Bialecki, uh and, and I, as well as uh, Dan O'Connell, we were out in Silicon Valley. And we walked into Facebook with, with Governor Patrick. There's 2,500 young people uh, in, in terms of the guys, there was no hair on anyone's chin in that whole building, right? And we lost that opportunity um, for $400,000.
And that young man not being able to connect with the right folks, some of the folks in this room, and to plant that talent um, that's here. And the last note I'll, I'll make is that we actually subsidize in our muni municipalities all of the colleges and universities because we have a payment in lieu of tax program. Um, which means that colleges don't pay the same tax rate um, that you would pay at, at your home. And, and I actually, there are amenities, and I think that's, that's a good thing. But we want to make sure that when we put that, uh, when, when, we, when we put those dollars in, that we actually get uh, the proper yield uh, on, the, on the other end. But I, I actually, I'm very, very pleased uh, to be able to work with uh, Leland, the great things, because he actually got into the council the first time he ran. I had to wait to the second time. That's all good, though. I got to do the governor's campaign in between. But um, he, he is a, a great leader, and we've been able to work uh, together um, in spite of uh, the political uh, climate. Um, that's out there. Um, we know if we're truly going to be looking for that next generation, um, that Boston and Cambridge and Greater Boston 2.0, it's going to require us um, to not fight over the same resources, but to build and uh, to bake our own pie uh, that's bigger than each of our individual crumbs that we currently have. Yeah. I think with that, uh, just say, the worst thing about being a speaker is always being between the guests and the bar. I think even worse is being between the guests and the dinner. So, but I, I uh, encourage you, I'm looking forward to all of you participating as uh, uh, Councilor Jackson and I try to work with Northeastern. And, and thank you so much again to Mike Lake for bringing us together and helping to catalyze uh, this idea of looking at talent. Uh, and really looking forward to working with both uh, the team at WCCP and all of you. Thank you. Well, thank you, counselors. Um, you can see why I have such great fun working with them, right? Um, this, is, this is the end of the speaking program for today. <laughs>